This training video was developed at the Statistical Services Centre at the University of Reading. It's part of a set of resources aimed primarily at researchers. It is often useful to produce frequency tables for each variable in the dataset, just to give you an initial feel for the data. Frequency tables can also help you to spot extreme values and errors. CS Pro includes a tool called Tabulate Frequencies to produce frequency tables of items based on value lists or the actual values. The Tabulate Frequencies tool is available on the CS Pro Tools menu. We first specify the data dictionary file, which in our case is Baseline Survey DCF, and we open this. In the left-hand panel, CS Pro gives the familiar lists of items in the identification, the household record, and the activity record. Let's start by producing tables for the categorical items. We'll choose the sex and age of the respondent, the four income sources, the types of wall, roof, and floor, and whether the household has a kitchen, pit latrine, and bath shelter. For types of frequencies, we choose value sets. We click the Run button and then select the data file, which is in our case is baseline survey merged.dat. And this produces 12 frequency tables for us. Let's look at the results. Starting with the sex of respondent, we see we have a total of 15 cases. Nine respondents are male and six are female. On age of respondent, just over half of the respondents are classified as young adult. We go to pension, we find that uh, two thirds of the household have pension as a source of income. And if we look at pit latrine, we find that 11 households have a pit latrine. Note that for bath shelter, there is one value missing and the percentages are percentages over all cases, including the missing case. Some other software packages will calculate percentages of non-missing cases, but for CS Pro, the percentage is over all cases. Now let's produce a frequency table for the activity code. We run, we use, and use the same data file. Note the total here is 33, as there are 33 activities among the 15 households. Five households are engaged in farming. Note here we are assuming that each household only has one row for each type of activity. But take care when you interpret the percentages. 15.2% for farming means that just over 15% of the 33 activities are farming. It does not mean that 15% of the households are engaged in farming. We would need to calculate that figure for ourselves. And it would actually be 5 out of 15, so exactly a third of the households. A frequency table for village code is useful for checking to see if you have the expected number of cases for each village. We have no value sets for village, so we select each value found. For this exercise, we'll choose the data file baseline survey 4, which should have 10 cases for each of villages 1 to 5. However, we find that village 2 only has eight cases and village three has nine. So there are three cases missing or still need to be entered for this data set. Now let's look at the income values. A frequency table here is not much use. But we can produce some general statistics. We run and we select the data file. We do go back to baseline survey merged. And let's see the results. 
five households have given given an income value for sale of crops. The statistics shown include the, the minimum, the maximum, the mean, standard deviation, variance, mode and median. A total of 10 households gave a pension value, but the range here is quite extreme, going from a minimum of 12 to a maximum of 2,513. It would be worthwhile checking these minimum and maximum values against the questionnaires. This demonstration has shown a couple of ways in which this simple tool can be used to produce summaries of the data, both to help in data checking and to give a feel for what the data are showing. More in-depth analyses should be done in a statistics package, and in the next demonstration we will show how to export data ready for analysis.